Hi everyone, welcome back to C programming tutorial series. In our last video, we have completed the discussion on one of the looping constructs which is do while statement. If you guys have not seen that video, then I just recommend you guys to watch that video as well. And in today's video, we will discuss about for statement or for loop. So before coming to today's topic, I just want to tell you guys that if you guys like this video, click on like button, share it with your friends, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and if you guys have any questions, then let me know in the comment section. Now let us start our discussion on today's topic of for statement. The for loop is another entry control loop that provide more concise loop control structure. For loops are also known as entry control loop because in the case of for loop, the condition gets evaluated first and then the body of the loop gets executed. That's why the for loop is also called as entry control loop. So here I have written down the syntax of for loop. For loop gets started with the keyword for followed by three segments initialization, test condition, increment or decrement. Then the body of the loop gets executed. So we will try to understand how this for loop works. So the first point, initialization of the control variable is done first using assignment statements such as i equals to 1 and count equals to 0. So whenever we will be using for loop, we first initialize the control variable to some specific value. Okay, so this initialization part is where we used to initialize a value to the control variable. The variable i and count are known as loop control variables. Next point, the value of the control variable is tested using the test condition. Okay, so once we initialize the initial value to the control variable, then that value gets tested in this second part. So if this test condition gets satisfied for the particular value of control variable, then control comes inside this for loop to execute the body of the loop. If this test condition returns false or if this test condition didn't get satisfied, then control will not come inside the for loop, then control will come outside the for loop to execute the next statements. Suppose, as I have said, if the test condition gets satisfied, then control comes inside the for loop to execute the body of the loop. Once the body of the loop gets executed, then control goes back to the for keyword to execute this third segment, which is increment or decrement. Okay, So, in this case, we are incrementing the value of control variable by 1. Now, the control variable value gets incremented by 1. Then, with that value of control variable, again the test condition takes place or the test condition gets evaluated. If this test condition gets evaluated, then the control again comes inside the body of the loop and again control goes back to the for to increment the value of control variable. Like this, with each and every iteration, the value of the control variable gets incremented and with that value of control variable, the test condition gets evaluated. If the test condition returns true or if the test condition gets satisfied, the body of the loop gets executed. Otherwise, control comes out from the for to execute the next statements which are present outside the for loop. So, this is the exact explanation written in the form of points. Now, we will move on to the next slide. Now, here you can see I have written down two examples. First example is just to print the numbers from 0 to 9. The for loop gets started with the initial value of 0. That means I have initialized the value of 0 to control variable i. So, with the value of i equals to 0, the condition, test condition gets evaluated. 0 is less than equals to 9. Yes, condition becomes true. Then control comes inside the for loop to print the value of i, which is 0. Then once this condition becomes true and the body of the loop gets executed, then control comes to this increment part where the value of i gets incremented by 1. Now the value of i becomes 1. So with the value of i equals to 1, again the test condition gets evaluated. 1 is less than or equals to 9. Yes, this condition gets satisfied. That's why value of i gets printed out. That is 1 gets printed out. Like this, with each and every iteration, the value of i gets incremented by 1. And when the value of i becomes 9, then again the test condition gets evaluated that is 9 is less than or equals to 9 
yes 9 is not less than 9 but 9 is equals to 9 that's why again the control comes inside the for loop to print the value of 9 then 9 gets printed out here then after coming out of this for loop again the i value gets incremented by 1 now the i value becomes 10 so again the test condition gets evaluated with the value of i equals to 10 10 is less than equals to 9 no now the condition becomes false that's why this printf didn't get executed and control comes out from the for to print the numbers okay so similarly i have written down the another example to demonstrate you the working of for so this example i have already explained you in earlier videos as well so this is everything about the explanation regarding for loop so that's all for this video guys if you guys like this video click on like button share it with your friends don't forget to subscribe to this channel and if you guys have any questions then let me know in the comment section and thanks for watching